And I think we're live. Are we? We should be. Yeah. Surely we are. We are. We are. All right. Joe <clears throat> Chaffee, Fios One News, Long Island, and Fios One News, New Jersey. And Joe Rayo, Fios One News, Lower, not Upper, but Lower Hudson Valley. There's a middle Hudson Valley. There's also, yes, that's right, a middle and an upper what, Hudson Valley. Uh, I'm trying to remember the def- the middle Hudson Valley is what from uh, north uh, north of Dutchess County to uh, I've always thought before I ninety or I always thought it starts like north of Poughkeepsie up toward Kingston and New Paltz okay and then the upper Hudson Valley is up is, as you get closer to Albany well you go north of Albany and Interstate eighty seven automatically and magically becomes the, the north, north way. way yes so, I know it so well I could I could uh, I I could get to Saratoga with my eyes closed I know that. <clears throat> now, of course, Belmont Park actually opens up on Friday, so you know spring is here. Really? Yes. Do do? It's, 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 we're getting there. Yes. Uh, Joe Arabi is on, so is John Sears. Matt Boder uh, is on with Dennis Cassia. Uh, the uh, crowd is just coming in rapidly yes. here. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> I, yeah, I've been kind of lamenting over the fact that I, I just don't like the spring. I, I never have. It's it's it's. I mean, from the standpoint of forecasting, it's probably you know we've said this before. I, I think it's the toughest time of year uh, to, to deal with all the different factors, particularly with the onshore flow. But the the bigger thing to me, the bigger issue is the fact that can we? It, it it's so hard to string two or three nice days back yeah. to back. It just doesn't happen. Right. And I was looking. I was looking ahead into next week. When uh, we've got this big ridge that's going to build up into the eastern states, but it may not matter if we're dealing with an onshore flow. Yeah, and uh, and I'm not liking that. We we had a nice day today. Actually, you know, it's a funny thing. We had a beautiful day yesterday. Yes, and yet and today was nice. Not as nice as yesterday, but still, it was it was okay. It was Rained a little, a little bit, bit overnight. Didn't right. get in any. Didn't really get in anybody's way. The day sides were fine. And tomorrow is going to be a fairly decent day as well. So we th- there's your three straight days. Although. Not necessarily consecutive because again we had that rain yeah. last night or whatever. But. And then of course you had you know yesterday was near eighty today some spots didn't get out of the sixties or got barely to seventy um, so it was cooler today tomorrow's going to be you know we have to deal with the wind off the ocean so clouds are going to start getting involved okay but it's just that after that we've got it, it's basically a one weather system after another after another after another right and it, I don't know it just gets tiresome after <clears> a while. <throat> Now this weekend looks like it'll be kind of windy, especially on Saturday, and hopefully the showers from Friday, spilling over into Friday night, will get out of here first thing Saturday morning. But then we have, as you just mentioned, another system coming in quickly, which may uh, bring rain to our parade on s- Sunday afternoon. Well, D- Dave Canelli was referring to us as the dynamic duo of weather, <laughs> and it just reminds me reminded me of uh, the Joker. Fat man and boy blunder. <laughs> what is wrong with this sentence? Well, the Riddler. Riddle yes, it is. Fred, Frank Gorshin. Frank Gorshin. Oh. They, they replaced Frank Gorshin with uh, John, John Aston. John Aston. But he was nowhere near Frank Well, Frank Gorshin, Gorshin was very... Uh, he, he, uh, he did a lot of Broadway. And... Uh, from my... Under- I, I gotta do a little... Go back and reread about this. I, I don't know that... That playing the Riddler was he didn't see it where people would recognize him as the Riddler right. as necessarily being complimentary right but no he was great as the Riddler no question um, I heard rumors that uh, in the movie versions of Batman that they were trying to get Robin Williams to play the Riddler I think he would have made a heck of a great yeah. Riddler but. now Cesar Romero as the Joker <laughs> uh, was, was, was brilliant and the thing is, I never noticed it until somebody pointed it out. His mustache. Now, yeah, you could, if you look, if you look at the tight shots and you look closely, yeah, the makeup is like right over the mustache. He refused to shave it, you know. So yeah, what the heck? well, he goes way back um, into the thirties. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Mr. Romero. Right. Um, there were a lot of old time actors who could, could be traced. To the 30s and 40s movies, radio. Oh, Burgess Meredith. Right. I mean, Burgess Meredith was was a, was a, quite the character <clears throat> actor. Right. I mean, everybody may know him from Rocky, but uh, I remember him from uh, 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 back in the in the 40s with, uh, um, oh my God, his face is right in front of me. <laughs> no, his. You you'll know. 
Abbott and Costello, he played the Wolfman. Lon Chaney. Lon, Lon Chaney, Chaney Jr. Lon Chaney. So he was with Lon <laughs> Chaney Jr. in Of Mice and Men. Okay. And you know, then he's And he did a number of Twilight Zones too. Yes he did. No. Yes he did. No. And Vincent um, Price. Vincent Price was very famous on radio as the Saint. Yes. So And Vincent Price was Egghead was his of all the from my reading of all the all the villains, Egghead was the was the smartest. Well, he was considered to be uh, in, very intellectual. He was, but um, Roddy McDowell played the bookworm, didn't he? Yeah, but and Egghead was, you know, if you took IQs of everybody, Egghead would have had the, you know, the okay. 185. All right. Okay. All right. Now we got, so we got. Vic, and it wasn't Victor Borno. Oh, King Tut? King Tut. Because he was a professor when he was not. That's right. Yeah. So. <laughs> How did we get into this? I don't know. <laughs> oh, because Dave Canale said that we were the dynamic oh, duo. Oh, the dynamic of duo. All right. Well, and then I said, you know, the you made me. Think all right, of already. We don't have to go backing up. The <laughs> well, you know, you asked. Okay, so let's take a look. <clears throat> Let, first off, uh, the visible satellite tonight. If I can pick the right one, and here it is. Uh, <clears throat> we really had a great day. I mean, we were sandwiched in between a lot of clouds up in uh, northern New England, upstate New York. And you're getting these blow-off high clouds from some showers and storms out in the Ohio Valley. And we kind of carved a little niche out today that looked pretty nice. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. We had even a, may I use the term, the $5 word, we had a paucity of, of, of cumulus cloud cover. We, you know, usually in the afternoon you see a lot of the sky covered by these big billowing. Right. We didn't have, really have no. that many. Of, it of, was of, hardly like, a cloud in the sky uh, yeah. today. It was yeah. really, really nice. But now you're seeing these... You know these blow-off clouds that are coming in uh, from the uh, from the west. I, th I I think some of that the first batch might come in tonight and then go out, and then uh, I'm thinking tomorrow morning we'll start with some sun, and then clouds are going to start uh, coming in uh, from uh, from the west. And here, by the way, before we even go to the radar, uh, just want to show everybody we're setting up a warm front to our south, and this is. This is going to be the issue going forward for later tomorrow, tomorrow night, because you're going to have an onshore wind that's going to develop uh, probably southeast or south, and a warm front to the south, 80s down in the Carolinas. A lot of folks that, uh, the, some of my regulars that are down in the Carolinas messaging me to tell, to tell me, hey, it's in the 80s down here and it's beautiful. Right. Yeah, I know. I right. can see it. <laughs> We're not there. But this frontal boundary goes all the way back, Joe, to Texas, and you know, it's a pretty busy, severe weather night in East Texas. Not not crazy uh, active. Uh, there's some showers and storms here. There's a dying, severe thunderstorm watch uh, that's going to uh, expire in a little while. And then you've got these showers in um, uh, southern Indiana, southern Illinois. I think much of this just kind of falls apart before it gets here. So I'm not really too worried about anything popping up late tomorrow afternoon. A couple of models had uh, a few shout, you know, like a couple of sprinkles pop up. I decided to just leave them out. I agree. I, I have uh, clear tonight. I had thin clouds veiling the sun for tomorrow in the Hudson Valley. Then I cloud us over tomorrow night. I'm thinking that the first showers that we may see here might come in as early as 10 or 11 o'clock tomorrow night, although most of the lion's share is going to come after midnight. As right. You just see there no. this big spiraling area of... Uh, Precipitation that's rolling toward us for Friday. This warm front comes up late Thursday night into Friday morning, and there's some showers with that. And I was want to say sometimes in the spring with these warm fronts like this, you wind up with uh, you know uh, uh, some heavy uh, uh, some heavy downpours and maybe even a thunderstorm as the warm front goes by. And I was kind of looking at this today, and I'm I didn't give it close enough look you know to see what, what sort of vertical motions we have. But I'm wondering whether there might be an odd thunderstorm that could be embedded as the warm front goes by. I, I was thinking about throwing it in, and I kind of held back. I'm, I was thinking more in terms of a, a cooler type of day on Friday. In fact, I, I went for an average high of around 59 or 60 on Friday. I just said to myself, it, it, it probably, rather than get convective-type activity uh, during the daytime, I think we'll just have some light rain. But maybe if that warm front can push up and through here on Friday night, then we'll have a chance to uh, see the atmosphere get juiced up a bit. And uh, if we do get any precipitation Friday night or early Saturday, that may be more of a convective-type outbreak with showery rains and, yeah, maybe a rumble or two of thunder. Well, you know, I saw the NAM 3 earlier today. 
uh, and I'm just going to go back a run. And I was looking at this. I, I don't. Uh, this is the third Friday in a row that we're dealing with a cold front and, and showers and thunderstorms. And I was looking at the NAM three kilometer, which has this really well developed squall line of thunderstorms approaching Friday evening. But my problem with this is it's a matter of timing and where the front is Friday morning is already into western PA the warm front is is going to struggle so we don't know how far north it's going to get the winds may be more southerly than they'll be southwesterly right so that will cut back on on some heating i just wonder this time around that maybe it, it, it's just timed wrong we're not going to break out into this warm sector and see temperatures shoot up into the 80s <laughs> and then bring the front through with some storms. I, 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 there are going to be places, if this warm front gets stuck, it, you know, there might be places from Long Island northward and through the eastern parts of the Hudson Valley and southern New England that have a tough time getting into the 60s. I believe it. I would believe it. And that warm front, again, will be the key. Uh, assuming that, at least in terms of the Hudson Valley, if it can get north of us on uh, Friday night, we may get into some of that uh, action to our west. Right. Unfortunately, the the NAM three does not uh, go out as as far as we'd like. It's only out to sixty hours. Correct? Well, it it does take the uh, latest one. Uh, I mean, it still has some pretty well developed storms in there, but it's not quite the solid line. In fact, they fall apart once they cross New Jersey and over Long Island, and then reform right. when they're out to the east. I don't know. I just kind of think that the uh, uh, the timing might be just a little bit off. And when you look, you know, the warm the warm push on the temperatures, you you don't have. I mean, you do have on the Nam three at least tries to bring temperatures into the seventies through c central New Jersey, but it kind of stops at one ninety five, and then yeah. north of there, it's 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 mid and upper fifties. So I. Yeah. You know, I I don't know. I I just it's still too early. Joe. Yeah. I mean, you know, if this were May, I'd say yeah, I think we'll hit it. But it's April, and to me, it's 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 always a tough push to get some of these warm fronts through, and that may be the case on uh, on Friday, Friday night. We'll, we'll see. All right. So let's 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 jump uh, let's jump to uh, the weekend because. Uh, I, I think Saturday, obviously Saturday is going to be the better of the two weekend days. It's going to be on the breezy side. Uh, you know, if, if everything clears out on time, it, it might even be a repeat performance of today to a large extent. I think the winds will be more vigorous on, on Saturday yeah. as opposed to what we have today. Yeah, um, I, I, I wouldn't disagree. With, I, I don't disagree with you on that. Now, this, for, this lead system is a bit more energetic. So it appears that this next thing for Sunday is, is going to... Is that snow in Wisconsin? <laughs> actually, it is. <laughs> and, and it, it might very well be, uh, and into southern Michigan. Yeah. And it might even be a few wet snowflakes in Chicago and Milwaukee again. Um, but this low, because this first system is more energetic and more developed, and the European really wraps it up, this next thing gets suppressed to our south. And Sunday is, talk about, difficult in terms of a forecast. I mean, it literally takes a surface low right along Route 195. So we're going to be sitting here Sunday morning into early afternoon with east winds from from there northward, where temperatures are going to be probably in the 40s and low 50s, and then in south in central south of 195 right. in the southern half of New Jersey, southeastern PA down to Delaware, it could reach the upper 60s and low 70s right. uh, before uh, the low goes by and. Uh, and, and it cools down. Well, you know, it's Wednesday now, and when we start looking at the weekend, at least this is how I look at it, for Sunday, I'm trying to uh, play the uh, the KISS system. Keep it simple, sweetie. Um, I, I, I've said for Sunday, sun, maybe some sun in the morning, and then wet weather by the afternoon. But if you look at some of these models, they rush that precipitation in so quickly yeah. that it may already be uh, doing something before lunchtime on on front on Sunday, so. might even be doing it almost to daybreak right. at, 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 at eight o'clock. The, the faster it gets in, the faster it gets out. Right, and you know the you could argue that this is at two o'clock in the afternoon. The low is east of Cape Cod by eight o'clock. You probably will see improving weather conditions later late in the afternoon if this is the case. Just in time for Rent Sullivan to come on. <clears throat> yes, yeah. uh, and, and then the the issue for <laughs> next week. The issue for next week is all right. Here's a. This one goes out. Monday looks reasonable, and then and then area another. Then one. you got another this and another frontal zone sets up 
uh, to our south, and this one's going to be a little more torturous because you know I was looking at these these uh, two meter temperatures with this ridge building in the east. You're going to have 80s up crazy. to Washington and Baltimore starting on Tuesday and lasting all of next week, and we're going to be sitting here, you know, dealing with this warm front slash onshore flow. And uh, look, up 70s into Western PA and into Ohio on Wednesday, 80s in Virginia into about uh, into Southern Delaware, and it's in the 50s in uh, in mm-hmm. New Jersey and 40s in upstate New York. It this, never seems to be. It never seems to be that the boundary zone is like, let's say, from Albany to Boston. It always seems to it's just very to rare York. this time of year. Yeah, very rare. Yep. Um, it'd be, well, you know, with with the ocean, but then being again, the way it is the people who are getting very warm, or possibly will be getting warm next week, come July and August. You know, th- th- those are the areas that are going to probably be exceedingly or oppressively humid. Yeah. You'll be happy that you're not down there. All right. So. Right. But you know, I was hoping that maybe toward the end of next week, that we would get a situ- get get a chance that we could bring some of this warmer air in. Uh, the European actually holds out for a little bit of hope from that respect, uh, because it takes that high and then drops it off Cape Cod, and you get more of a southwest flow, right, or even a westerly flow before some kind of upper, cold front. And allows the upper ridge to kind of inflate, so to speak, up toward us. But uh, yeah. Um, like that, yeah. So th- that's what you got to hope for, and well, we'll see. Yeah, you know, this is uh, this is the dilemma of the springtime. This is this is what we battle uh, on a da- on a on a daily basis. Uh, then we'll just you know y- we just got to get to a point. Usually by mid to late May, the onshore flow uh, situations tend to relax a bit. They don't completely disappear. Sometimes they show up in mid to late June, right? But um, at least uh, we will get some of those warmer days, right? Uh, to move on in, it will be nice. It will. <laughs> um, so Frank Charles Michael Jr. Uh, I always thought that the Mid Hudson Valley was the Albany area. Would you care to address that? Ah, uh, you know, I guess it's all subjective. I- I'll bet you that there's probably a map of the Hudson Valley. De- with the demarcations of what is the lower and the middle and the upper Hudson Valley, whatever. I mean, we've always said that we're in the lower Hudson Valley, and my my assumption was that if you go north of Poughkeepsie and on up, let's say, from about Poughkeepsie to New Paltz, anywhere north of that would be the, quote, mid-Hudson Valley. But, you know, I, I'm sure I might I might look around and see if there is some kind of specific definition for, for that. Um, just... Uh, Collective hellos back to everybody. And yeah, allergies, uh, a big deal. Uh, everything's greening up rather quickly with the reg. It isn't even so much the volume of rain that we've had, but the sort of the regularity of the rain has caused everything to green up, uh, even on Long Island, which usually is pretty late to see stuff bloom. Everything seems to be blooming right on time right. for a change. The last few years, uh, everything's been so delayed. I can't remember which year it was. Well, last year where I was... I took a picture um, at the very beginning of May, and there was nothing on most of my trees. Final, I mean, this year, if you step outside, many of the trees are are budding now, yes. and everything is coming out. So it's much different than well. And last year, of course, we had that winter extending, you know, well into the month of April. Right. The last few years, it's been that way. Uh, but I could certainly rem- remember one. I'm trying to remember what year it was, but it was within the last five years that. We had I had to wait out my way almost to the middle of May because it was either too cold with with the extended cold pattern and then when it would try to warm up we would go to an onshore flow and stay cold anyway. Yeah. So yeah. it didn't even make a difference. It's a no wind situation. It really was. All right, so I think we could wrap it up here at this point. Uh we'll uh Joe and I will be back tomorrow. It's a little subdued, I guess. Uh when, when the weather's like this, we, you, somebody wants to know: is snow in Glen Falls on Sunday? I'll well, tell you what: I'm, I, I haven't really taken that close a look, but you know, as I just mentioned, Sunday down here, we may have a tough time breaking above sixty, and mostly in the fifties. I wouldn't doubt that if you go north up toward Glen's Falls, forties or even thirties, and maybe some flakes. Of yeah, that's that's a pretty good, decent shot of chilly air that's come down, and it's a fairly, you know, the, the short wave trough uh, and the upper features are cold. So I wouldn't be surprised. This you know it, it, it's going to be elevation driven. 
So just bear that in mind. This time of year, especially in the daytime, right. uh, it's definitely going to be elevation driven. And you know, as far as you know, if you think if you're thinking that some spots would get an accumulation, it would have to fall at night. Uh, we're 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 way pe- we're at the point with the sun angle right. thing that you know we're talking about August uh, sun angles right now, uh, right early August. Um, where are we in the calendar? April twelfth is uh, the end of August, so now we're where are we? We're ten days. Late. So now we're into mid to late August sun sun angle. You get a bad burn if you stay outside. If you can stand staying outside for any length of time, uh, you could you can get you know on a day like today. You get no, oh, yeah, burn, oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right, folks. So uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow night, and of course, uh, Brian Fitzgerald uh, will be here tomorrow morning to uh, get you going on FiOS One News, Long Island, New Jersey, and Lower Hudson Valley. And then we have Brittany Borer and Addison Green, and they will be here for the midday, and then you and I will be back for the afternoon and evening run and hopefully back here tomorrow night Mm, hopefully we'll have some clarity on friday and uh, how the weekend's going to play so everybody have a great night and um we'll see you tomorrow we will be here